This is so dang weird to me. Uh Uh-oh. There's a Pop-Tarts movie in the works. What? There is a Pop-Tarts movie with Jerry Seinfeld behind it. This is a story about the rise and fall of Pop-Tarts. So Fall? (laughs) Well, just rise, I suppose. Mm. But the unfrosted, the Pop-Tarts story coming for Netflix. So this is... This is the tagline that really, really got me here and why I really wanted us to talk about this today. It is the uh, a story of ambition about... Uh, oh, where'd the line go? Sorry, guys. A tale of ambition, betrayal, sugar, and menacing milkmen. Wow. If that doesn't get you interested, I don't know what will. What that sounds like my story. Wednesday mornings. <laughs> that's your Wednesday? Yeah, 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 yeah. Menacing like milkmen? Some, 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 some. Uh, what do you call that? Some sketchy things going on with Pop Tarts, it sounds like. Well, apparently there was a real battle for who would make the next breakfast pastry between Kellogg's and Post. So this is what this is kind of going to dive into and explore. This comes from Deadline. We'll look at what they had to say about the film. Um, they've won the rights to this very, very competitive film situation. I didn't know there was a war for this. <laughs> um, and why not? Right. So uh, Seinfeld's relationship. Oh, wait, there we go. Um, Unfrosted is set in 1963 Michigan um, and will watch as sworn cereal rivals Kellogg's and Post race to create a pastry that will change the face of breakfast forever. Mm. Information on the roles to be played by Seinfeld and the newly introduced members of his his ensemble have not been disclosed yet. But we do have a real who's who of who's in this cast, right? We have Melissa McCarthy, Jim Gaffigan, Amy Schumer, Hugh Grant, who's on a real hot streak like we were talking about earlier this week, and James Marsden, who I absolutely adore. Also, Jerry Seinfeld is going to be in it, too. We what? don't know who anyone's playing. But yeah, is it just going to be a whole bunch of what's the deal with Pop-Tarts? <laughs> like, how is, how is this story going to come to fruition? <laughs> That's funny. Well, thanks, Ray. <laughs> uh, Rob, when you hear about a Pop-Tarts movie... Does that get you excited in any way, shape, or form? Well, remember, you know, the the Coen brothers made the Hudsucker Proxy, which was about the creation of the hula hoop. That's very true. So, you know, I think think that any story that is about a rivalry Mm -hmm. to create something has something, it's a competition story. There's something inherently interesting about that because you want to know who's going to win. Yeah. So I, I and who doesn't love pop tarts? Do you have a favorite pop tart flavor? I really liked the s'mores ones yep. growing up. Those were awesome. I was a cinnamon pop tart guy. Those oh, were good is too. That the brown sugar one. Yeah, the yeah. cinnamon. I love cinnamon, and, and people have always like uh, hot tamales are some of my favorite movie candies. Mm-hmm. And everyone always said to me, the only reason you like hot tamales is so you don't have to share them because you're the only one that likes them. That's fair. I'm like, that's not true. Everyone likes Mike and Ike's. But I like hot tamales. They're both, well, they both, is Farrah Pan still around? But um, I love Pop-Tarts. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves Pop-Tarts. I still, to this day, you know when you get Pop-Tarts, they're in the cardboard box. Yeah. You pop the top off and they come in the foil, the foil container pack. with mm-hmm. two Pop-Tarts yeah. in them. You know, and there's something about that crinkly foil. Like the that's that foil, I'm convinced, is made in some secret lab only for only Pop-Tarts. Only for the Pop-Tart? Probably by the same people that made the foil that the lem was wrapped on for the Apollo missions. It's Ooh. the same oil. Controversial questions. Were you a absolutely have to toast it or did you eat that thing raw? Oh, raw. Raw. You I mean, animal. Oh, yeah, no, dude. What? I, no, I meant well, for Chris, you How uncouth. Them? You I toast toasted them. them. Look, toasting Pop-Tarts is great. It takes it's an off. entirely different experience. The crust is a totally different experience mm-hmm. if, it is, if it is raw. Yeah. But you know what? Pop-Tarts on the go. I'm the kind of guy that would take a really great bagel mm-hmm. and then a piece is going to, this is going to freak people out. I'll take a bagel and I'll take a piece, a single slice of like craft cheddar, sharp cheddar. Mm-hmm. I will throw the piece of cheddar on the bagel, mm-hmm. no toasting, nothing, and just eat and that. And just eat that? that yeah, because I, it's an on the go thing. You? I'm telling you, Pop Tarts nope. are great. The thing is, when you have a Pop Tart and you toast it, that means you're actually going to sit down oh, and I, eat it. I would just walk around with my hot. Tart. Oh, so you know, because then it's too, it's too hot. You can't. Yeah, like yeah. if I'm driving somewhere, you, I'm, you know what I mean. You like if you're gonna go somewhere, Jonathan obviously is gonna heat okay. his pop tart. He microwaves his donuts. Yeah. So if you're at home, you have time to heat up your pop tart. You're not in a rush. Yeah. You're just gonna go sit down and eat toasted. It. It's wonderful. But I did learn the beauty of the raw pop tart. Actually, so 
when I used to be in the edit base for the Fine Brothers, you know, I'd sit in there with a producer and it's like we would just we'd split a Pop Tart. We don't have time to toast it. Right. We're, we're trying to get content out to all you love. You can't people. go somewhere like so the, the kitchen. I learned to just, you know, he takes one, I take one. And it's it's just, you know, it's not raw, it's still cooked, but, <laughs> you know, you just eat it cold. So I get it. I get it. There's, they're delicious either way, but toast. It's, it's over, John. By the way, this could be the most debated topic in the comment section down below. Ever. We thought Star Wars was divisive. Wow. No, it's a hot topic. Tarts. Yeah. I, I got to say this about it's a the actual topic. movie yeah. that they're making. Yeah. I'm interested because there's a show, I don't, is it Discovery, Na National Geographic, on the weekends where it's called... Uh, a food, something in America, food in America, something like mm -hmm. that. It, they document the rivalries with Coca Cola and Pepsi, M and M's and Hershey's or whatever. Those right, I watched those through, and um, the founder was good. Yeah, yep. I was gonna say, yeah, this. yeah the founder, the founder was founder great. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the cast. I, I the casting doesn't really. I don't really care. I'm more interested in this story. Yeah. That's gonna. What, there's some dirty stuff that happened between rival uh Kellogg's food Post. company yeah, yeah. yeah no food doubt. companies back in the day corporate espionage there has to be an interesting story with this sure. also the mm -hmm. uh flaming hot cheeto uh documentary or movie that's supposed to come out about how that came out to be i'm so looking forward to that they're making Anything a flaming food, hot baby. cheetos movie yeah, yeah. They're, awesome. they're about how it was created about that guy who discovered it uh the it, the, we talked it about it Amazon? a while ago. Like yeah, uh, deep in the, in the Amazon, Amazon, flaming hot Cheetos were discovered. No, uh, you, you know that story is well, uh, unless they scrapped it. Going I mean, through the we jungle were, with we, machete, and he stumbled upon Chester the Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> we reported that thing a little while ago, um, but yeah, all these food movies. Well, Keep I'm, them coming. I'm with you, Ray. I love this kind of stuff. I listen to the Sporkville. It's one of the podcasts I listen to on the drive up here. And it's it's shows about food to explain humans basically and human behavior. And there was a really great episode just about like how spam came about. Oh, or, that's awesome. which is really cool. There's another one that's about how um all the jello heiresses believed there was a jello curse that followed their family. Like I love these kind of food related wow. things. And so when you take something too that is just I mean, it is very like Americana, right? A pop tart. It's right. what we all kind of grew up eating as a quick breakfast when our moms were like, "Just go, get to school. Who cares?" To have that nostalgia of what you used to eat as a kid mixed with corporate espionage, and all of the dirty, dirty stuff that could happen behind the scenes in the 1960s, I do think it could be a really intriguing film. The thing that's the oddest to me, honestly, is just Jerry Seinfeld gravitating towards this. He probably loved pop tarts as a kid. Yeah. You know? That and maybe the characters involved in the real story were really kooky characters. Mm -hmm. Were like very outrageous, and I could see each one of this ca uh, these uh, cast members uh, uh, playing that part or whatever. Um, I don't, do we have a release date for this or anything? We don't. This is just in the works now. They're in the pre-production stage of this. This is going to Netflix, though, you guys. So that's another thing we talked about. How animation? I'm a little more lenient. Live action film going to Netflix. Does that give us any pause here? Well, it's got a great pedigree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the story is compelling. Yeah. But, you know, Netflix might, they might adopt because of their stock price tumbling. They might turn to theatrical distribution. That's very Because why not? I mean, The Gray Man, a $220 million film mm -hmm. with, with, you know, Chris Evans and, of course, um, Ryan Gosling fighting each other. Why not put that in the theater, gain some of that cheddar? Mm -hmm. make the money back and then put it on your streaming service. So Absolutely. maybe even though it's for Netflix, we'll see it in theaters. Well, and, and Netflix has had a few prestige films, obviously Oscar nominated films too. And stories like this tend to either be little indie darlings that we kind of see smiling. They're fine. Or they blow up and they do have that kind of prestige following yeah. where they get nominated for things. Uh, By the way, I just as an aside, I realized as I thought about it, like I would eat cinnamon pop tarts <laughs> raw but I did not like fruity pop tarts raw. Oh yeah, if you what? ate a raspberry raw, that was. I didn't like that. I, I like good raw baby. No, no, no. You got You didn't raw dog a, a, a fruity, raw a fruity. Dog. Um, no, okay. you didn't I'm raw dog. Did. No, you didn't raw dog no. a fruity pop tart. You had to heat it up. Technically, you raw dog all of them because you take but, them out of the wrapper. But, but uh, to bring up a point of net. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we just killed Rob. Okay, Rob. He really just died. Rob is the, no, he's actually eating a pop tart underneath his desk. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even get he's sticking in raw pop tarts. I didn't he's like, I will never eat a little pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Rob, baby. 
Okay. Swish a chick. <laughs> but you were saying that. <laughs> Rob Hart. Okay. I, I'm saying if they keep it like a documentary style, like I've never had a problem with Netflix documentaries. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think they're good. So I don't know. I, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I, if they really go by the book of what happened with this uh, brand or this uh, food, then I'm all for watching this. I'm, I'm totally Me excited too. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, the question is up for what you. Happened? What do you think of Unfrosted, the untold Pop-Tarts tale? Are you interested? Are you worried about being on Netflix? How do you eat your Pop-Tarts? Let us know all your hot takes in the comments down below. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Let me take a second to tell you why my wife, Ann, and I love HelloFresh. As two working professionals, at the end of the day, it can be tough to get dinner together. And HelloFresh saves us loads of time, money, and most importantly, gives us great tasting and nutritious meals. And no joke, with the easy to follow along instructions, Ann and I actually have a blast cooking dinner together. And they're so foolproof, even I can do it alone when Ann's not there. And HelloFresh now has over 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That is the most choices of any meal kit out there. Customize your favorite dishes with new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. So guys, right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code Campia 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit.